Hey pilots, Drain Man here, and today I have a very special video. Today we are going to check out the brand new Flight One Mega Bolt. That's right, on the Drain Man channel you get to see it first. You better stay tuned. All right, where are all my Flight Oneers at, huh? I know you guys gotta be is static we've had a drought and the drought is finally over in a previous video I went over the brand new flight one afterburner ESC I've got a full video full review on that ESC we haven't done the flight video yet but we have the review video I'm gonna go ahead and link it down in the video description go ahead and check that out all right so we had the, before these ESCs came out, we had the Bolt 32, we had the Spark V2, we had a, we had a few lines of ESCs. Flight One went ahead and created two ESCs that would take place of previous ESCs. And one of them, which we've already gone over, is the Afterburner ESC. I'm going to show it to you. I've got it in a build right here. And I am going to go ahead and tell you that it does fly amazing for all the Flight Oneers that are worried about how it's flying it is absolutely amazing but this ESC right here took place of two ESCs because you've got the 20 by 20 you've got the 30 by 30 but if you're a 6s pilot who's really pushing your quad to the limits this is probably not the ESC for you it is just not designed for that so they went ahead and they've dropped the mega bolt and you can tell by the name alone that this ESC means business so it's finally out it's finally here I'm super stoked to check it out I can't wait to show you guys this I can't wait to see it myself it's like a it's like a unicorn it's like a mystery mythical electronic that just uh, we've been hearing about it and we just I just can't wait to dive into it I'm super excited first thing I want to do is I want to talk about right here on the front of it it says that you must use with external capacitors and they've got documentation and info at flight1.com and what that means is, is that they've taken the ESC and they removed a bunch of the surface mount capacitors because they're just taking up space. They pulled them out of there and now they've included some inside the package that they want you to go ahead and use. And that way you'll get the best results and if you have any issues with it, you can just desolder it and put on a new one. Now another thing too that I noticed on the afterburner, which is also on this one, is you get a code and don't be trying to use my code, that's my code. They have listed a code and it's some type of coupon code slash inventory code SKU number it is what it is it's a number that basically if you're having issues you can go to flight1.com forward slash DRP and you can enter this code or give this code to get a discounted damage replacement and we talked about it in the other video how there's plenty of companies doing all types of different replacement programs and all types of programs you've got stuff on frames you've got stuff on motors but this is the first we've seen anything on an actual electronic that is super exciting I'm super stoked about that that means if I fly this and I crash it and I have some type of issue whether it's my fault their fault or malfunction we'll be able to hit them up and talk to them about it and figure out what's going on and maybe get you know get a new one or a discounted one or whatever this is a 50 amp ESC it is a 4 in 1 and it is a 30 by 30 when you get your scissors and you go to cut it be careful that you're not cutting nothing inside the other package had some place to tear this one does not so you're most likely going to have to put a pair of scissors or a razor to it or something and be careful you don't want to damage nothing I spent a lot of time on these ESCs as you know because during the drought we were without ESCs and there's a reason for that and that's because they spent a lot of time on these they wanted to get it right and I believe that they did especially because my experience with the afterburner has been really really good I had a lot of fun with it I'm loving the way it handles and flies and it's just easy to work with plus if it's flight one you know it's gonna be a good product let's go ahead and crack this baby open huh oh man oh man Woo! all right here we go so right off the bat, we've got a bag with our capacitors in it. We've got two very large capacitors. So these are 25 volt capacitors. They are 2200 microfarads. So this is a very large capacitor. The afterburner came with 1000 microfarads and I think it was a 35 volt. So that's going to be the difference between those two. These are much bigger because this ESC is expected to do a lot more damage than the other one. 
All right, I do want to point out the red grommets. That's Flight One's color. I do love seeing the different grommet colors for the different companies. I think that's pretty cool, and I like how they like to match it. We've never seen this. This is super freaking awesome. Look at that. It's got a red connector. Look at that, huh? That's cool. All right, so we've got our grommets. We've got our 4-in-1 connector, and we've got two... 2200 microfarad 25 volt capacitors and we have to use these all right it's time to see it here it is are you ready wow there she is all packaged up no peeking all right let's go ahead and crack it all right bam there it is let me get you guys in there so of course it's red with the gold solder pads absolutely gorgeous Alright, so if that's not a good looking ESC, then I don't know what is. Man, that is gorgeous. Look at that. It looks very simple too. It doesn't look like they tried to cram too much and try to make, you know, try to overdo it and then you've got nothing but problems going on. Alright, the very first thing we're going to talk about is this big old empty space right here. Because right here is where you could fit a lot more capacitors and we can get a lot more filtering going and we can have a much cleaner ESC running. But what did they do? They went ahead and they left this spot open. And there's two reasons why. And the reason why there's two reasons is because there's two types of pilots. You've got your racing pilots and you've got your freestyle pilots. So they left this open because if you're a racing pilot, you're going to put on an external capacitor and they've got a special heat sink that you can buy that goes on here and it's going to disperse the heat. And when you're pushing that thing going on your third lap, two minutes on the clock, battery's almost down, you're not going to be overheating ready to explode. And they've actually had that where these racing pilots are melting these ESCs. So they really put some thought into this by doing this and I think it's absolutely awesome. I think it looks cool too. I love it. And I like how they stuck their name right there too. The second reason why they've left this gap is because you might be a freestyle pilot. And if you are a freestyle pilot, you've got no business with a big old heat sink because you're not going to be pushing your quad that hard. So what do you want to get out of this? Well, you want the extra capacitors. You want all the filtering you can get. You want the cleanest video. You want the smoothest, tightest, most locked in feel you can get. And that is what this ESC is here to offer. And the reason why is because just like you can purchase the ESC heat sink separately, they're going to go ahead and have an actual plate. And what it is is you put it on top and now you've got all the extra capacitors you can ask for. And then you're still going to add an external one, which is going to really help too. You got two huge power rails right here. You can see them. We've got current sensing right here. We've got our positive, our negative pads we've got our motor pads and then we've got our connector pad well it's not a pad our connector so we've got here we've got a white end and we've got a red end all right so the idea behind the red and the white is is to let you know that the red is the one that goes to the ESC so if you go ahead and you put that in it's a perfect fit as you can see it's a very snug fit it's nice and tight but if you were to try to fit the white end, which I guess they didn't have to color code it for you to know, you're going to have trouble getting it in. As you can see, it's not a right fit. So this belongs going to your flight controller. And then I would imagine by the color coding that you would know your pin layout. Right there, you've got your ground. You've got positive. We're going to have some type of telemetry and uh, current sensing going on. And then you've got your four motors. Now it is flight one, so you don't have to make a big deal about the motors. Just put them in. It doesn't matter if they're right in the right order. The GUI will take care of it for you. They've got a ton of wizards that'll do it. On this side, you can see here, I know you guys are looking for it. I'm looking for it too. We've got no labeling as far as what's for what. We didn't really get nothing in the package that told us which pad is which. I would imagine if you're plug and playing with the flight one flight controller, it really wouldn't matter. But I guess it would be nice to know, at least maybe throw it in the bag or at least write it on the flight controller. So if all hell breaks loose and I rip this off, they've absolutely hooked this up and gave us some really nice solder pads right here. And they're through hole too, which means you can hit them from the bottom or the top. You can stuff the wire in and know that it'll never ever come off. You'll break the wire before you break the pad. Where do they go? Which one is which? 
So I'll have to do some testing to figure that out. This ESC is so new right now that there is no pinout on the internet. I already know how Flight 1 is though. There's going to be more than enough info on them, but there's not enough of these in circulation yet to really worry about it. But if you do get your hands on one, don't worry. There'll be plenty of information on it. Flight 1 will take care of it like they always do. All right, another thing we got if we is we've got a positive and a negative pad right here on both sides. Now let's figure out what those are for. Okay, so I went ahead and tested those real quick and I found that those are full lipo pads. So whatever you're putting in here, you're getting right here. Now keep in mind, you can put whatever you want through here. You can do it however you'd like. But I think I just came on to something. I like that. I might go ahead and run that. Or I can do it in another angle or I can even solder some wire and run it over. Alright, these are big healthy MOSFETs. They're absolutely gorgeous. On the afterburner we had really small ones and they were metal. These are definitely not metal but these look really, really nice. I'm excited to take a look at them much closer and see what we got. You can see right here by checking this out, you can just see the, the quality and the placement and the design and everything they did. It's absolutely gorgeous. I am noticing that they went ahead and they ran a jumper from here to here and I do know that people have been waiting a long time and Flight One tries their best with customer service so I know that they kind of wanted to go ahead and get them out and get them going and I'm going to go ahead and say that they knew that this was going to happen and they went ahead and they did it anyways just to get something out to you guys so you guys got something to fly. You can see here, these are F3 microcontrollers and they're absolutely gorgeous. Then you've got your MOSFETs here. You've got All right, I do want to point something out. On the afterburner, there were some complaints because there was nowhere to solder right here. So that means that you either had to solder on the top or you had to solder on the bottom. Oh, well... You could either solder on the top and that was it. For this one, they've allowed where you can actually solder right here. So that is plated and you can solder right there. So if that makes it more convenient for you or if you're running your XT60 in an upward motion, you can plop against and run like that if you'd like to. Now, I did not design this board and I do not work for Flight 1 or anything like that. So everything that I'm telling you here is just my opinion. This is my review on this product. It's how I I feel about it with my experience and that's all I can share with you all right guys let's go ahead and throw it in the scope and take a closer look all right so I definitely want to take a closer look at these these are the microcontrollers they do look really good I also wanted to take a look at the BB2 chip these look really good as well also we can get a close-up on the FETs I like to see those up close see what kind of quality we're looking at and you can see that this is an N-channel MOSFET. And there's two main types of MOSFETs, and the N-channel is definitely the better of the two. And they are definitely more expensive as well. So for them to look at this, use N-channel on every single one. Alright, so taking an up-close look at some of the SMD soldering, you can see that it's very nice, clean work. I do like that. I've seen quite a bit of sloppy stuff. And then right here we can see that bridge that they put. It doesn't look like we're going to have any problems with it. It does look like a good strong bridge. I don't know that it was the best way to do it. They probably forgot to put in a trace or whatever it is, but no big deal. They went ahead and took care of it probably after production. So there it is. It's looking good. I'm sure it won't be a problem. I'm curious as to what purpose that's serving or what trace we missed. I'm sure they'll fix it on the second batch, but for now, if something that this is doing ever stops working, at least we'll know where to look and all we got to do is throw a piece of solder back on it we'll be back in action. All right, let's jump out of the scope. All right, pilots, real quick. I know I already said it, but make sure you keep this. Don't throw this out. You're going to need it, so don't throw that out. So right here, you're seeing everything that you get in the package. We've gone over each and everything. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I will work on a flight video. I will also work on a build video so that you guys can check this thing out and get more personalized with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.